Juan Bragg, late Apex. Ooh, a little too early. It's all right. Hey, Vu. A little Vu, early. We're live. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. We're live. We're live. Oh. Tech Active Life started. Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. Hold on, hold on. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Uh, they'll fix that. Ugh. Oh, uh, uh, let me turn this off. Let's turn this off. Hi, everyone. Sorry. Let me see. Oh, let's see here. We got a show to do, right? Oh, my bad, my bad. Welcome to Tech Tactics Live, episode 31. And uh, we're at PCA headquarters. Today, we're going to talk about sim racing. Um, let's start off with be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. And uh, tonight we have two raffle prizes. Of course, we have uh, prize number one. The grand prize for tonight is a full-on play seat, racing chair, and membership to iRacing, a four. And let's see here. Let's see if we have the second prize. We have Sim Racing shirt and another membership to iRacing. So make sure you put your name and where you're from uh, by 820 and then we will pick a winner live tonight and by the end of the show we will know who has won. So let's make sure that we thank Pirelli for all of this. We've kind of transformed the PCA garage to now the PCA game room. Um, here with me, I have Director of Marketing and our sim racing guru here at headquarters. This is Jim Hemmick. Jim, welcome. Hey, and uh, thanks for bringing your setup. And yeah. I brought my setup and we're going to talk to folks about, uh, you know, how to get started in all this. But we also have um, our ringer uh, on the executive council <laughs> that's with us tonight. His, this is Aaron Ambrosino, PCA's vice president. Not only is he a sim racer, but he's also a club racer. He does driver's education and occasionally lets me beat him at autocross. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good evening, good evening, Jim. Glad to be here. All right. So we have a lot to cover tonight. Uh, we're talking about how to get started in sim racing. I'll just first start off and share with you all that I've never really been a gamer, believe it or not. I always was the kid that hopped on my bike and went outside and, and just, you know, stayed outside on my bike or my skateboard or whatever, or, you know, until my parents told me to come inside. So I never really got into gaming, even when, you know, the different consoles, you know, from the, the Atari to Commodore to PlayStation and all that Xbox. stuff. I'm kind of, Xbox. I'm kind of dating myself saying Atari, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> they had racing uh, games on Atari. They did. It was a like, ding, ding, ding. Anyways, um, but I, I did always play the car games. Like I remember my uncle, he had a, a PC set up and there was a, a car game that he would always load up for me. Oh, I think he's got to adjust his mic. Okay, no worries. Um, so... So when, when sim racing kind of came about to, I guess to the PCA world about two or three years ago, I had noticed that how advanced um, the setups were, but I was kind of apprehensive to know how to get started. And Aaron and Jim, they, they kind of jumped in early, also with Doug Atkinson, our sim racing chair, and the whole, there's a whole committee behind it, which we'll all explain a little bit later. But let me tell you, now that I've had the folks in the PCA Sim Racing world kind of help bring me into all of this, it is really amazing. And that's why we wanted to do the show tonight to share with all of you, right? So this is not, now th there are great platforms out there like Xbox and, and PlayStation, which are great racing games that you can also do like race against each other and stuff, right? So maybe if you wouldn't mind sharing, Jim, what we're talking about tonight with regards to iRacing and our setup. Oh, I'd love to. And I'm glad you, you were having some fun before the show started, Boo. <laughs> I'm sweating. <laughs> I need some water. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's addictive uh, playing these games. So uh, who asked a good question? So what's different about iRacing and about PCA sim racing? There's plenty of good uh, platforms out there, whether it's console-based or PC-based racing. There's, there's plenty of options. Um, but PCA went with iRacing because it's got a really good league structure. So you can set up a league. You can set up a championship schedule. Uh, you can invite racers. You can tally the points after every race 
can have a championship winner. Uh, there's a lot of depth to iRacing um, that uh, we found fit our needs. So we can actually have a full series, a full schedule, a full league, and iRacing does that. It also has all of the, the other benefits, you know, great, vet, uh, great uh, graphics, uh, you know, has all these tracks. Uh, one of the things that iRacing does quite well is they go out and they actually laser scan all the tracks. So when you're driving a track, Watkins Glen, Road America, Road Atlanta, uh, Summit Point, Manny was in here dri driving Summit Point here this afternoon, and it's the same track that if you went out and, and drove that track, it's laser scanned down the last bump, the size of the curbs, the straightaway distance, uh, everything exactly the same as, as the real track. Yeah, and I, I've driven, Summit Point's our home track, so I've driven it quite a bit as well. And it's, the realism is just amazing from, you know, the transitions from the pavements, um, the, the reality of going out in the first lap with cold tires and cold brakes. Um, so let's, let's move over to Aaron. Aaron, what did you think? I mean, moving from, you, you're a second generation pca or you've autocross, you've done DEs. You know, I think a couple years ago you got into club racing. Honestly, I was kind of surprised when you said, hey, I'm going to get into sim racing because to me it didn't, I don't know, it's not that it was backwards per se, but I was like, you're doing all this real car stuff. Like, I didn't think that a simulated racing league was going to be attractive to you, but you're just as addicted to the sim racing as you are with everything else. Yeah, absolutely. You know, again, I started playing video games like you did and it wasn't, you know, very realistic. But, um, you know, iRacing and the laser scan tracks and the inputs through the steering wheel, the pedal, the feedback you get with, um, through, the, through the pedals, through the wheel, it's amazing how realistic the simulation is. And, um, you know, there's a lot of areas on track where, you know, when you're driving it in real life, you know, you feel the same bump in the sim as you do in real life. Or, you know, when you roll over a curb, you feel that same input through the car in real life as you do in sim so um you know again when the pandemic hit last year and we weren't DEing, we weren't club racing i'm like you know this is like a natural next step for me to give uh sim racing a shot so um with the help of doug and jim i was able to get myself a rig get started and it is just it's a blast very realistic um and it's been a lot of fun and, and speaking of getting started i think you were the one that was probably giving me the biggest push over the hill because there is an initial investment right it's not it's not it's not incredibly expensive if you want to start with like a a basic package which we'll go over in, in a second but it's a commitment right but then i remember the thing that you told me is like vu yes let's say you push me towards the mid-range because i guess you knew how far uh, how far and how hard i would fall into it so you pushed me into the mid-range which i think my total spend was about 1500 or 1800 dollars which was a lot of money like i was him and han for a while and you put it into perspective it was like Vu, you you said you wouldn't bat an eye at spending 1200 dollars on tires yeah. you know you wouldn't bat an eye at two or three hundred dollars on brake pads or just a weekend you know doing a de and and f you know for let's say the price of two de's we were going to have this set up and then i could drive you know, at any time Every I could. evening, all year long. Exactly, and, and, and what I want to also emphasize is maybe the one reason why I never really got into just like computer gaming is because I felt like it was a very solo thing. And as many of you can probably tell, I'm kind of a social butterfly. And what I love about <laughs> iRacing is that this too, much like a DE, like when you guys invite me to do laps together and stuff like that, and you make fun of me or I make fun of you or whatever <laughs> it is, like the social side of it is there in, in this whole iRacing thing, which is to me, that's my, that's my favorite part. But um, let's bring up the agenda. We let people know what we're gonna be talking about tonight. All right, we're gonna go through uh, what equipment you need to go racing from the basic to sort of the moderate like I have, and maybe we'll touch upon some more of the advanced equipment uh, talk about what uh, e drivers education, how it's similar to what we do in PCA's driver education program. We'll talk about what's necessary, the steering committee that kind of keeps everything running for the program, how to register for iRacing, how to go wheel to wheel racing, what are the different classes, what's team racing, and we only have an hour and we can't cover everything. 
So of course we have references on um, simracing.org, uh, which again is going to be a valuable tool for you to get started because this is not exactly, or as I found it, it wasn't plug and play for me. And if I didn't have Jim here kind of holding my hand and, and uh, Aaron holding my hand Guilt to get trips. through it. Yeah, I mean, it's, you guys are a great resource. So let's just jump right into it. And um, maybe, maybe we'll have you kind of get started with your rig and share with folks what we're looking at over here. Okay, so um, this is what I use at home. Well, at least this portion of it. So um, I went with the entry level uh, rig just because in equipment, because I wasn't sure whether I'd like this. I wasn't sure how far I'd get into it. So this is a TV that was just in our bedroom uh, to my wife's chagrin. I just uh, went and grabbed this TV. So a standard flat screen TV will work just fine. I got a Thrustmaster force feedback steering wheel that is under $200. I think I found it um, on eBay for 150 something. So it is not an expensive steering wheel, but it does have force feedback. So it does shake and rattle when you're hitting curbs and, and you can feel the bumps in the road. Um, I've got a entry level Thrustmaster uh, load cell pedal set. So what's critical with pedals is you want to be able to have sensitivity in your, your brake and your throttle. So I got a load cell set, which again, it was an entry level. It was under $200 um, for, the, for the set. And it provides good responsive braking and, and throttle response. And, and I, I use a standard desk chair. I, I, I use my desk at home. I just have my, my TV on a desk. I have this steering wheel bolted to my desk and I use a regular old desk chair. And I have an absolute blast. So I'm in the challenge class, which is the, the entry level class for, for us newer drivers. And I'm right there in the thick of it. I've got, I'm on a grid with, with 40 cars and I'm right in the middle with my little $400 investment and I'm having a blast. So you don't have to have um, uh, you know, the top of the line to get into this and have fun. But that said, having something the next level up does have its advantages and do you want to share Well, before yours? we get into the moderate setup, let's say I will tell you I am a witness that he hands my behind to me on the track with his quote quote basic setup. So you don't have to I jump have to in. rub it in once in a while. Yeah, you don't have to jump into, you know, a, a more expensive setup well, to be fairness, competitive. Well, in all fairness, I've been doing this for a year longer than you. So a year from now, we'll, we'll look at your lap times. And yeah, that, we'll that excuse is only going to last me <laughs> so long. Um, there's also, you know, for those of you that are adventurous in how to acquire things, like people are buying and selling and upgrading all the time. Like I know Aaron, when he wants to be faster, he buys better equipment. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but but there is a lot on the used market. So in like like Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist yeah, or even, just even just even our, within the committee and the, and the people. Yeah, even on our PCA uh, sim racing Discord channel, there's a, a channel where people are buying and selling used equipment. So yeah, there's a way to get something that's uh, maybe a step up without paying brand new prices. Yeah. So we'll um, we'll maybe hop over to this side here and uh, actually, why don't you? tell them about it and I'll work the camera okay. and then Aaron you can even chime in because you're the one that, that kind knows, of recommended knows this well knows this setup really well so where I said I use a desk chair this is actually a chair we had here in the office so um, I use a desk chair Vu actually went out and got a racing seat and this so, is the one that we're giving away tonight yes the, yeah you could actually win this so Vu's got a full racing seat he also has an upgraded steering wheel you could tell by just looking at the steering wheel it just looks a lot sharper than, than mine. I like mine, but this, if you see the modern uh, GT cars racing now, they're using this kind of steering wheel. So this is a, um, uh, a force feedback steel that provides a lot more responsiveness than, than mine. Uh, Vu also has the Fanatec, the matching pedals, which are definitely an upgrade over what I'm using. So this gives you just an added layer of, of feel to the track. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, iRacing has gone out and laser scanned all these tracks. So how your car responds to that track and how you respond to the, you know, to the, the road itself is critical in driving at speed. So this steering wheel allow you to feel everything and has far more sensitivity to turning in and feeling the car 
uh, starting to slide. And then of course the, the pedals allow you to feather the brakes and, and feather the gas to a much uh, higher degree than what, than what I have. Um, this is a monitor we just happen to have in the office, but Vu's got a larger monitor at home. So his setup is definitely a mid-level um, upgrade from the entry level, but you said you had how much into this? Like 1,500, 1,800 into it. And, you know, I'm still kind of getting, getting used to it all. And, and maybe, Aaron, you can talk about why you recommended this steering wheel for me because they have different types of steering wheels that this actually pops on and off and you can get simpler ones, more advanced ones, and maybe share with people what all these buttons do. Yeah, absolutely. What's nice about that, sir, as you said, um, they have different versions of it, so you can pull that off, pop a different one on, and within the game, you have the ability to um, assign different actions within the game to the buttons on the steering wheel. So a couple of things you have would be like a pit speed limiter. Um, they have push to talk, so you can speak to other drivers within the game. Um, and then there's what they have is a uh, area called a black box on your screen, which will show you know where your position is, uh, what other cars around you are in relative time. Uh, you can look when you go into the pits if you want to change tires, add fuel. So each of those buttons can be assigned to do something different on the screen while you're racing. So having a steering wheel with, you know, obviously more buttons, the better, because the more things you can assign to it. So again, I have the same setup as Vu. It's a great uh, mid-level setup. And as Vu mentioned, you know, when I don't get it, you know, can't get any faster, it's time to buy a new piece of equipment. So, uh, <laughs> you know, we're, we're this, looking this... at a direct drive. Yeah, direct drive wheel now, because the, the uh, wheel that Vu and I have are, is a belt-driven wheel. And then the next step up is direct drive. Yeah, so this wheel has, as, as he said, lots of options that you can assign. And that's even a talent to be able to utilize the oh, buttons yeah. while you're driving. Because when, we, when, we, when I've been in you know, laps with them, and just doing push to talk is a challenge for me. So, so them being able to you know, look left, look right, and doing all this stuff, it's, it's a talent, that, uh, a skill that they've, they're, they're learning as they drive more and more. The, the feedback is amazing. When you go over the, the, um, the curbing or you go over bumps, you feel it all very much like a, a, a real car. Um, so, I mean, I love the realism of it all. And I think someone online here, I'm looking at the live chat, was talking about the pedal set. So you had mentioned load cell. What does load cell mean when, when it so, comes to the pedals? Um, so my pedals, I, the first pedal set I got were just plastic pedals, where it was basically like an on and off. Um, and there was no sensor in there. So these actually have sensors in there and they have springs. You can probably see the springs on that one view. And you can actually adjust the spring rate. So if I want it to be stiffer or looser, I can adjust all that. And so the springs control how much pressure you have to put on it. And then the sensor will allow you to, you know, feather the brake a little bit. So it's not just an on or off button. Right. Like some of the, the really entry level pedals, they just have a pedal and you just put the foot, you put your foot down and it's like all of a sudden you're locking up your brakes. Right, right, right. This doesn't do that. Right. So I quickly got this upgrade, but these have even better controls. So again, it's just how much you want to spend. Um, the, uh, the, the, you can see the, on the back there, you can see the little uh, sensor and you can see the, yeah, uh, in the spring. So it just depends on how much you want to spend, but the more you spend, obviously, the better feel you're going to get. Yeah, so to date myself, I remember when that, that arcade game Pole Position came out, like those pedals were like, you always floored it and you spun the wheel when yeah. you turned and yeah. when you hit the brakes, it was like on and off. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is so much more realistic as a car. It has like different bushings underneath that you can change out. So when you, when you lightly tap the brakes, it, the car in the, in the, the graphics you know responds accordingly and when you slam on the brakes it'll lock them up just like a real car and someone had asked about three pedals versus two i chose to go with a two pedal setup and i left foot brake i don't know why but i'm okay with left foot braking some people like to do a two pedal setup where they're using their right foot to do both and then there's people that will have three pedals for when 
you know, I guess there's a, a manual car that they're going to yeah. choose in the race. But the, most of the racing that we do are all PDK or... Yeah, so you can actually buy or set up a, a sim racing rig with a, you know, with a manual, with a, a stick. Um, you can see I actually took the clutch pedal off mine just so I wouldn't hit it. Yeah, um, oh, okay. Because, um, and, you know, nothing against a manual. I, my Porsche has got a five-speed and I love driving that. But in sim racing, nothing is faster than PDK yeah. in shifting with the paddles. Uh, so if you want to be slower than everybody else, <laughs> um, you yeah. have a stick. If you want to be with everybody <laughs> else, you do this. So you really only need two pedals. And then that gives you the option of, of doing right foot, left foot. And, um, and some of our better drivers still only use one foot. Use oh, really? right for both. Okay. So um, it yeah. just depends on, on your preference. And at home, I've you know, chosen to use the TV in our family room. It's like a 55 inch 10 year old TV yeah. and it works just fine. Um, and the last piece of equipment that I bought is this. I don't know if you guys can see it here. I'll show it to you, but it's a nice headset. Um, yeah, you really feel like you're, you're in it <laughs> when you, you throw these on. It has uh, the microphone that you can talk to each other and then you can connect it to push to talk. Um, not not too expensive. I think these are maybe like a hundred bucks or something like that. Yeah. Completely wireless. It's good to have those. So if you're if you're new to sim racing, one thing that's really cool and and uh, you know Vu mentioned you know you go to a DE or an autocross and you get to tease each other and we always have fun. Um, but while you're driving, you're driving. Yeah. Uh, the fun and the camaraderie happens afterwards or in between sessions. In sim racing, we wear heads, headphones and a microphone and we talk to each other while we're driving. Yeah. You know, hey, pass left, pass right, um, you know, nice, nice lap, you know, nice qualifying or whatever. We can all talk to each other during the race. It's, 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 Thanks for getting out of my way. <laughs> yeah. So Vu mentioned the press to talk, so yeah. you're trying to press these buttons so you can talk to each other, uh, take some practice. but. It's a blast because we all have fun just uh, talking to fellow PCA members from across the entire, you know, North America while we're racing. And probably what's most important about the headsets is that the people that you live with at home don't have to listen to your car and don't have to listen to your conversations because if you're not in it listening to what we're doing is probably annoying. Yeah. <laughs> We don't have to listen to you and Aaron tease each other while you're sim racing. I'm sure Amelia is probably back there shaking her head going, yes, that would be <laughs> extremely annoying. It does help. All right. So and I, then the one piece, if you want, if you were going to mention it next, Vu, yep. I'd love to have Aaron's perspective on VR. Oh, yeah. Because what's nice about this is you can set up a single screen or double screen or triple screen so that you can see, you know, all the way around the front of the car, of course, to the right and left with, you know, three screens. But really the pinnacle of this is VR, where you can see everything around you. Um, you, can, you can look up, look down, look back, look around. But that's, that's where Aaron comes in. Yeah, thanks, Jim. So when I initially started, you know, that was kind of the big decision. Is where was I going to go, single, triples, or VR? And um, I started off with a single screen, and it worked pretty well. But... Uh, Ultimately, the decision was to go VR, and since I made that switch, I've never looked back to to a mo to monitor. Um, you know, the immersion is amazing uh, with the VR headset. It's almost like wearing a helmet, as Vu was doing uh, when we first came on. Um, and what's the biggest thing I've noticed is depth perception when you're driving. You know, as you enter a braking zone, it's that depth perception from when you begin to brake to the point where it's time to release the brakes and get to your turn in. Um, the, the depth perception is much better with the VR headset than with uh, just monitors, at least in my opinion. So um, it, it's super valuable. And again, as you can see in the video, you can swing your head side to side and you can see everything. So if you're running a track like Coda that has a few uh, sharp hairpin corners, you're able to kind of look around pick up the brake back. I didn't have that luxury, so you were kind of guessing, you know, where that apex was. And you can also obviously look out the side windows and your mirrors. Do you see anybody next to you? Somebody's trying to pass you, pass them to see if you've cleared them, they've cleared you. So having that ability to kind of look around and see everything in real time with the VR headset is, is very beneficial uh, when you're racing. It gives you a lot of situational awareness, uh, you know, when you're injured. But the, the, the details are amazing because when I drive, I don't get to look down at the floorboards and the bottom of the dash and the VR, you know, obviously is, is the, oh, 
I think I have to turn my car off here. I think I ran into the wall here. <laughs> uh, but, uh, so what, what do VR headsets run? Actually, let's, let's kind of go back to my, my setup to give people the cost. I think I spent, I told you I spent about eight, 1500 1800 I'm not sure what I told my wife, but somewhere anyway, <laughs> somewhere around there. Um, but you can get bundles too. Again, you can also buy uh, used ones, but for a while there, I tried to look for used ones, but it seemed like used ones were just as expensive as new because they were out of stock. And so I decided just to buy new. I don't know what the market is currently, but they have bundles. You can buy the, the steering wheel and the pedal sets and the actual load cell pedals as a bundle to save some money there. Um, this, the, the play seat I think is like 350, 400, something like that. Again, I used my own TV. I got like a $20 wireless keyboard. Oh, the computer. Need, need the computer. We need to talk about the computer because that's, <laughs> that's pretty key to run all this. Yeah, so um, you probably noticed we've got some pretty sizable uh, looking PC computers here. So a couple questions that all people always come up with uh, first and foremost is can I use my Mac? Uh, it only runs on the PC platform. iRacing only runs on the PC platform. So you need a PC. Uh, you need a PC with a graphics card. So the second question is, can I just use my PC from my office or my, you know, my home computer? You need something with a graphics card. So these are so big, these boxes, because they've got a, a, a graphics card in there that generates a ton of heat. So these boxes are big because they need fans to just circulate the air through there. So you can get these for $800 to $3,000, depending on what you want to spend. Um, but you can get them at Walmart, you can get them at uh, Best Buy. We found one. Get them we online. needed one for the Amelia Island Concord because one of our computers got damaged. And we bought one off of Best Buy for like 800, 900 bucks and it yeah, worked perfectly. Yeah, so you want a gaming computer. So there's the specifics. When we get to the, the end here, we talk about where to find some of these resources on PCASimRacing.com. We can mention it, but but yes, you need a PC with a with a Okay, because that was, that was a question that Bruce Goldsmith has is, does it have to be a PC and can you run it on a Mac? Yeah, it doesn't, I've, I've never seen it work on a Mac. Um, you could probably, if you have a really new Mac, you could try to run Boot Camp and basically uh -huh. run it as a PC. But uh, I've not had anybody that had favorable results with that. It always seems to come back to a PC. And if someone also asked here, I'm looking down at our uh, live chat, someone said, if you have an old laptop, that's probably not powerful yeah. enough to run the graphics and yeah. the processing power. Yeah, and what happens is you end up on a track. Again, it's a laser scan track, so it's a big file. And in PCA sim racing, you could be on the track with 50 other cars. So your computer is trying to keep track of 50 cars on that track. Yeah. And a laptop generally doesn't have the graphics horsepower to, to keep track of that. Okay. We also have another question from Rich. Rich is watching. and. He noticed our play seat here. That's just a brand that I happen to choose off of Amazon. Um, that's, I don't know what brand that one is, but you know, you can look around and maybe if you talk to the other gamers you, out there, just yeah. whatever, whatever yeah. your budget, whatever you feel looks good yeah, or whatever. There's a lot of options. It's easy yeah. to search for, you know, sim racing seat, yeah. um, Amazon or Google, and you'll see a lot of options. Heck, if you got an old seat in your garage from your old race car. Oh yeah, we've seen people take Porsche seats and bolted it down to yeah. a rig so that they feel like they're actually in their Porsche, which is actually, I, I would prefer that. That's kind of cool. Whatever's comfortable. What, what is probably most ideal for most of us Porsche fans is we want it to feel like a real driving experience. So whatever seat works for you, but just make sure you're comfortable. And if you want that added level of realism, just try to get yourself in a seating position like you're in a real race car. And, You'll have more fun. Yeah. And uh, someone asked about brands of steering wheels. Yours is what? What brand? A Thrustmaster. Thrustmaster, Fanatec. Fan Fanatec. Fanatec seems to be kind of the large. Fanatec's very good. Yeah. Thrustmaster has a lot of different options, um, different price points, uh, but they're still kind of considered the entry level. Fanatec is when you're serious. But there's also other, other brands out there as well. Okay. And as we're talking about the, the VR, I believe. The VR setup that Aaron has is Oculus. Is that right, yeah, Aaron? Probably. And I actually I have a uh, HP Reverb G2. Oh, okay. And yeah, headsets. You know, VR headsets can run anywhere from probably the four hundred dollar range at the low end. You know, up into the thousands, depending on you know the size of the LEDs that are you know in the headset and the resolution yeah. and how many frames per second it can render. Uh, so again, you know, there's the entry level all the way up to 
you know, the high end. So the, the reverb G2 is probably, you know, mid range. It's been a great, it's been a great, uh, headset. And unfortunately they were, um, I pre-ordered and it was about six months oh, before wow. I actually got my headset in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but, Sim uh, Racing they're, has gotten so popular that equipment has been back door back ordered for so long. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. the other nice thing about if you do VR is that you're not going to have to take away the screen from the kids from watching <laughs> Disney Plus. Yeah. Uh, and you can actually go sit in a little closet and go racing and no one would be even aware of what you're doing. Yeah, you can but there, there is a drawback, like 400 bucks on the low end, let's say you're 600 bucks for a pair of VR. There is a drawback that we haven't talked about yet is like for me, like I can't ride teacup rides or you know, I can't do rides at Magic Kingdom um and with with vr there is a possibility that you could get motion sickness yeah it's it's it it's like being in a real race car um you know that sensation uh, what we kind of recommend and and this is just through feedback from some of our pca sim racers is if you want to get into this and you want the most in realism start with a mid-range uh, rig and setup and get used to it get used to you know going around the corners and braking and accelerating get used to all that before you go crazy, because on the really high end, you can get a full motion simulator where the seat moves as you drive around the corners, and you know you can have VR, you can have the total realism. But sometimes it's a little shocking to go from never doing this before to going to full motion. So it's better to kind of get into it at some level. Um, you don't want to waste your investment, so the seat and the steering wheel and some of those things, but maybe don't go right for VR. Yeah. Unless you know you're not going to have a problem, but maybe you know get started and then move up. That's what Aaron did. Aaron started with a you know with a, a monitor and moved up to VR. So how would you how would you recommend people kind of split their spending, whatever the budget is? Like that, should they put more towards steering wheel, more towards pedals? Pedals. Pedals. <laughs> At least personally, and okay. I, I think you'd, uh, most of the sim racers would echo it, echo this is the pedals are really critical. Mm. Um, the steering wheel, yes, but the pedals are where you really want to make sure you're, you're putting your money, um, you know, before VR, let's say. Um, but having a good set of pedals makes a huge difference. I, my pedals aren't even great, but from the ones I had before, my lap times were one to two seconds a lap faster just because of the pedals. Just because of the pedals. And it can make a huge difference. But one thing I would like to comment on the equipment is it might seem a little daunting. It's like we're talking about all these options, pedals and you know, and, and steering wheels and seats and computers and all this. Uh, our, our PCA sim racing uh, group has grown to almost 700 registered drivers now, and it's a really good network uh, of, of folks. And you can get on our Discord channel and just say, hey, I, you know, I have a question. Is this a good setup? Is this a good one? Is it, what, what do you think of this computer or this steering wheel? And everybody's very giving, and they'll be like, Here, here's what I think, here's what you should do and, and they, they will really help and, and they've been fa you know, absolutely fantastic in helping other new drivers get, get started. So good resource. So those of you that aren't into gaming, he just like glossed over Discord. What the heck is Discord? Discord. So um, yeah, I was actually new to Discord as well. So Vu and I not coming from, you know, the gaming generation. You know, we didn't know that Discord has been this this long-standing communication tool for gamers. So when we got into sim racing, we had to learn about Discord. But PCA Sim Racing uses a Discord channel. Discord is an app um, that can run on your phone, can run on your PC, it can run on a Mac, and it's a communication tool. It's very similar to say Microsoft Teams, uh, where you can you can chat with drivers, you can video chat, you can share your screen. Uh, there's different channels where you can segment and say, okay, this channel is about, you know, equipment options. This one's about the next race is coming up, and you can just scroll through and you can you can type in there and 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 communicate with other drivers. So our channel is dedicated solely to PCA sim racing, but we've got all these sub channels where we can have these conversations. Um, some of the the better drivers, and we'll talk about the EDE in a second. They'll actually share their screen on Discord, so you can watch, and they can say, "Here's how to set things up, and here's how to get going." And you can ask questions. Um, they can record those sessions. It's just a great communication tool, and that's how we all stay in touch across North America. Is to go through our Discord channel. And if nothing else, because Discord has you know alerts and chimes that are kind of unique 
Like I got major cool points with my kids when they walked downstairs and they heard the Discord al alert go off. They're like, Dad. Dad's on Discord? Dad's on Discord? <laughs> what? <laughs> so I got some cool points there. Um, before we go into EDE, we did a get a question from Greg with regards to uh, software prices. So Discord is like oh, a fr is free. Yeah, good question. Discord is free. Yeah. iRacing costs money. Costs money, but it's fairly minimal. In fact, tonight we're giving away um, three months or something like that, right? Yep. Three months of iRacing for free for a few winners. But even if you don't get the the, um, the raffle prize, it's like fifty nine dollars yep. the first year. And the next year, it's like 100 I mean, it's, it's yeah. quite inexpensive. Yeah, P people ask us, so what does it cost to, to, for PCA sim racing? Well, PCA sim racing doesn't cost anything, but you need to buy all the stuff. Yeah. So, um, yeah, all the equipment, the hardware costs, but those are one-time costs. So to your point, Vu, the reoccurring cost really is iRacing. So it's a subscription-based service. So you, su you subscribe, and it's, it's I think it's just over 50 bucks, as Vu said, for the first year. They give you a... 50% discount, and then the second year it's $100 a year. Uh, but you do have to pay for some of the cars mm -hmm. and some of the tracks. So um, before you know it, you start accumulating tracks and cars. They're not expensive. I think a track is is just over $10, and most of the cars are just under $15. Right. So Porsche and iRacing just released in June, they just released the Porsche 911 GT3R. And nice. everybody, anybody that's, on, that's doing sim racing uh, in our program or sim racing and iRacing watching this, they're all cheering because we just love this new GT3R. So Porsche just released this. We all bought it. I think it was 15 bucks. But once you buy it, you've got it. You've got that car forever uh, as long as you maintain your iRacing subscription. Uh, you buy a track, you have the track forever. They do update these tracks. So regularly you'll be, you'll be logging in and it'll say, oh, we have an update for Road America. So they keep them current. So if you subscribe to the service, you'll get the, you know, the updates to these tracks as you move along. And so your, your upfront cost may be a little bit as you get started and you buy some tracks, but you'll find pretty quickly that we repeat a lot of the same tracks. Yeah. You know, we always go to Daytona and Sebring, and so you don't have to buy them every year. You'll have them going and forward. And they make it so, so easy because they capture your credit card. Oh, yeah. And if you want to click for a car <laughs> or click for a track, it's like, Boom, no problem, there it added, is. added, yeah. added, and yeah. you have this collection and you have to be careful that you don't try to collect all of them. Um, but before, before I want you to show you people like all the different preferences, maybe if you can get set up on your computer, but I wanna congratulate the raffle prize winners. Jared, congratulations, you've won the play seat and the subscription to iRacing. Jack, you've won the PCA Sim Racing hat, t-shirt, and subscription. Congratulations to both of you. Make sure you reach out to Damon and we will drop ship this to your front door. So let's, um, I'm gonna move around here and just kind of walk through the, the iRacing options because I think that's probably the thing that um, really yeah, impressed I think, me with all the things that you can do. And I'm going to try to move this camera up close here. Yeah, and, and we'll, I think we'll, as Vu mentioned, you know, we'll touch on this. I, there's only so much we can show in an hour. But I think the most important point to emphasize is, is if anybody's watching this and thinking that this is a game, um, this is advanced to a level that it's not a game anymore. So we mentioned all the settings that you can do in your hardware. Um, there's, it's, a, you know, it's a slippery slope in terms of how much time and energy you can put into setting this up the way you want it. I mentioned all the laser scan tracks. So the this, this tracks are all based in reality. And then you get into the software side. So just like any car, you can get in, in, a, in your sim race car, you can adjust where your seat is, you can move your seat up and down and, and, and you know, wherever you want it um, visually to see. Um, out the front wind, uh, windshield, um, you can adjust your mirror so you can see behind you at whatever angle you want. It's all adjustable. Then you get into the car itself, and the car itself has tons of adjustments. So this just shows, this is the, the new GT3R I was mentioning. So this is the, the tires and the aero. So you can adjust tire pressures and, you know, and camber and all your aero settings so you can adjust your 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 uh, wing rates and all your downforce um, settings um, on your chassis you can adjust all your spring rates 
and everything. So you can just see how much adjustment can be made. Um, I mentioned earlier that I'm one of the one of the drivers in the challenge class. That's the, the entry level class. I don't mess with any of this because it's way over my head. But you get into our pro class drivers and they are going through every little thing, setting this car up to be optimal on that track and on those conditions. I'll jump in right here. Those settings for the some folks that I've I've driven with, they dial it in, they take the time. I don't know when they do it, but they do it. And what's very cool is they can opt to share that with you. Yeah. So you go to a track that you have no idea, you're all running the same cars, you're not ex exactly sure how to set it up. They can share their car setup and all you do with one click, you can have your car dialed in, which I think that yeah. is super cool. Yeah, back to Discord. So when Vu mentioned Discord, there's a channel on Discord where some of our pro drivers will actually post their setups. So to what Vu's talking about, some of the better drivers are like, hey, I, I just spent some time, I set this up, I'm gonna share it with everybody. And then the rest of us newer drivers just go and load them real quick. <laughs> Thinking that it's gonna make us faster, but it's really the driver. <laughs> yeah, it's really the driver. But what's really cool is, is that level of realism's in here. Um, you also have setups, so that was on the car setup side. You also have a lot of setup on the, you know, on the actual sim side where you can adjust your, your force feedback on your steering wheel, your brakes, you can adjust the sound, you can adjust the graphics. So depending on how much you spend on your PC, you can adjust the graphics to be either more, uh, have more realism or less realism, you know, basically resolution. So you can have everything. I love to race at sunset with clouds and I put the clouds on a high detail because it just looks gorgeous. Um, but you can pick and choose all of these different settings. Um, you can also, because it's a, it's a digital file, you can save the replay of your race or any race you're in. And then you can go back and watch it later from all different uh, uh, viewpoints. So, you know, when, when we're racing, so again, for those that are just brand new to this, this is what you see. You see out the front windshield and you're driving like you're driving your car. But when we share these on YouTube, and I know Robert's showing a bunch of... Um, video from some of our races um, you know so they've got cameras around the track just like a real race and they're showing all the cars driving when you're driving you're racing you don't see that view of the track side uh, you know uh, racing going on but you see this view but later you can save your replay you can watch it and you can see all the action if somebody gets a little close to you you can go back and watch it later and see oh that was Vu and uh, <laughs> and uh, get a good laugh about it. But yeah, the settings on here are, are just, um, they're endless what you can configure in your, in your racing car. And when you're in sort of the, the practice mode, you can hop into anyone's cars and you can watch their line, you can watch it. And again, if the whole idea is that you're gonna learn. I think we had a question from Chris Shane about you know needing to learn how to drive and that was certainly me. Hopping into one of these rigs is not like really hopping into a car because you, when you hop in the car, you have you know these these limiters in terms of you don't want to wreck it because <laughs> it's an expensive car, it's not your car. But for some reason, when you hop into a simulator, you just have no problems like putting the gas pedal all the way down. And unfortunately, this is set up to react how in reality, if you were to do that in real life and you would stuff the car into the wall, well, that's, that is what will happen when you run on these, these uh, simulator rigs here. So there's a bit of respect and, and you have to sort of teach yourself to respect it and, and don't feel bad that you don't drive well the first time. Most people, when they start, a, you know, try a simulator for the first time, they're terrible. And they're like, oh, this isn't lifelike. Well, it really is. It's just because you're driving it, yeah. not like how yeah, you would in real we, life. We, we, we hear this a lot. And, you know, really the reality of it is, is this is hard. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm honest with myself enough to know that if I got in a real GT3R at Road America without any practice, that would be hard too. <laughs> yeah. You know, that would, be, that would be tough. So this isn't easy, but like any skill, you just have to practice at it and get better at it. You know, so our, our entry level group that I race with, we're all very polite. Hey, go ahead, you're faster than me, pass left. And we're just trying to learn our, our way. You watch our pro drivers race, they are, they are inches away from each other for the entire race. And they're good at it. They know how to maneuver their cars and, 
and not crash into each other. So it just takes practice. Yeah, and just like in real racing, those folks that have been doing it for a while, they are so incredibly consistent and they can drive nose to tail yeah. for hundreds of laps and it's, it's not a big deal to them. So we are, we've got a lot to cover still. Um, let's talk about EDE and what's that all about. So we've been talking a lot about equipment and we talked about this is not easy and the realism's uh, quite high. Uh, so what we learned, we, we started this in 2019. So PCA decided to start a, a, you know, a, a PCA sim racing league. And we started and we had a few dozen drivers uh, that were experienced in iRacing and uh, knew what they were doing. So we started with a core group of experienced iRacers and then word got out and the program really started to grow and before we knew it we had a hundred couple hundred as I mentioned earlier we're almost to 700 registered drivers now so with that growth we've had a lot of, of newer folks like myself Vu saying hey this is cool what how do I get involved and with all of the new uh, drivers coming in, we had to come up with some way to, to provide some education. Well, it, it, didn't, it wasn't uh, a difficult stretch to say, well, why don't we try to borrow from some of the other PCA programs? Mm -hmm. We've got a high performance driver's education program that's been very successful for many, 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 many years. And it works well, so why don't we just do that? So we came up with EDE. So it's basically like an electronic. We're not that creative. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're just trying to play yeah. off of what's already working. So instead of a DE, we got an EDE. Uh, so we came up with a, a, a program. So some of our better sim racers, some of our pro sim racers, and then frankly, a lot of them are DE instructors. Mm -hmm. They said, hey, we'd be willing to step up and uh, put something together. So Jim Huth and David Palmer lead our EDE program and we've got, I think we have 14 instructors now. So, um, and we'll talk about the website in a few minutes, but you basically go to the website and you just sign up for an EDE session. So they will assign you a, an instructor, they'll show you the ropes, they'll explain Discord if you need it, they'll explain iRacing, they'll explain how everything works. Um, but the coolest part, what Vu was talking about, is you get in a session with your instructor and they will be in the cockpit with you. Mm -hmm. Usually usually they drive first and you're in the cockpit. So you can set your iRacing to be so your view is in their car. And they'll explain you know, when to get on the gas, where the braking points are, when to downshift, when to turn in, when to get on the gas. They'll explain all that and then they'll let you get to the, behind the wheel and they'll get in your you know, in your cockpit with you, and then they'll watch you and give you some instruction, and very similar to DE, and uh, um, you get a chance to, to, to work with some of the better drivers and get understanding how it works. So we have individual sessions, we have group sessions where you can be in with a group. Uh, Jim Huth uh, coined the phrase clown car, where sometimes they'll have a session with a whole bunch of newer drivers, and you all jump in one car. Yep. Jim's driving, and you're all in there with him. It's like a clown car, you know, got 15 people in it with, um, with Mr. Huth driving around. And he can explain all this. And then when that session's over, you all jump in your cars. you got 15 drivers on the track, you know, driving and learning and doing, uh, you know, mock starts and, and doing a, you know, a, a parade lap and then giving it a go and then slowing down and doing another parade lap, just getting used to race starts. So there is a ton of education that, that uh, the drivers have offered to provide and it's a great way to get into this if, if you've never done it before. And it's very, like, you know, we, we coined it EDE, obviously it's very similar to what we do in real life. And it certainly is. Like I remember my first instructor at a PCA DE, Bob Novis, and he was driving an 86 911 bone stock right and here driving a very similar car to mine and i thought you know after driving all these years i'd be an awesome driver i get on the track and i get in the car with him and he just blew me away yeah same thing happens when you're driving with these instructors in ede and you're going is he going to break <laughs> and how is this car going to make it because when i tried i slide off the road and then i have to hit yeah. reset and what's frustrating when you reset in ede just like in real life if you were to start out with a new car every time you reset that means you're going out with cold tires and cold brakes again so you have to like yeah, rewarm awesome. the car get used to everything and um it's it's Pretty awesome. Yeah. What's nice about the EDE, uh, the whole program, is it's so similar to everything in PCA, whether it's autocross or concours. 
PCA is all about education and, and mentoring and bringing people on it. The story Vu just told, every one of our EDE instructors has a story like that. Yeah. Like I remember the first time I went. So we've got a very established program. The next step that we're working on now is basically like a Sim Racing 101. So we want to put something before EDE. So maybe you're watching this tonight and you're like, hey, I really want to get into this, but I don't even know where to start. So we're now pioneering a, a Sim Racing 101 program where it kind of helps you select the equipment, helps you get registered with iRacing, helps you get up on Discord, gets you ready to hand you off to an EDE instructor. So uh, we're working on that now, which I think will be very beneficial to folks that were really new. Vu and I could have used that some yeah, months ago, sure. but you know, I think it's, it's going forward, we think it could be a good program for newer folks. Quick question from Chris here. Um, in real life, many of us would kind of start with a slower car and go into, you know, eventually into the, the Porsche that we've really dreamed to drive. Chris is asking, does he need to register an iRacing and get a Miata and then go into a Porsche? Your answer to that? Well, no. Um, <laughs> straight to the Porsche. Just go straight, straight to, to the Porsche. The, so yeah, what this is I, a dream life. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can always do that. Nothing wrong with iRacing in any car. But what's really cool about what iRacing has um, for us with Porsches is they've got the GT4, so they've got the Cayman Club Sport uh, 718 GT4, and that's got um, anti-lock brakes and traction control, you know, it doesn't have as much horsepower, so the GT4 is kind of that entry-level car, so you can just get right in the GT4 and go. You don't need to start with the Miata. And then the next level up, they've got the GT3 Cup, which is a handful to drive. Um, and then the next one above that is this new GT3 R I mentioned. And then above that, they have the 911 RSR, which is the GTLM GTE racer uh, that has uh, traction control but no uh, anti lock brakes. That thing is a screamer. And then the top, top one is you can actually drive the Porsche 919 hybrid, which, if you're just bored one afternoon and you want to just throw down some crazy lap times, you can actually drive a 919 around Lamar. So it um, provides a lot of options. So you don't have to start with the Miata. You can definitely start with a, a GT4, and it, it feels much more like what your road car would feel like on a track. Let's get back to Aaron, since he's a club racer. Let's talk about wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing and the classes in sim racing. How's it similar? How's it different? What's, what, are, what can people expect to, to, to do that with us? Yeah, sure. So for sim racing, you know, it's based on your experience level. Uh, there's challenge, which is the, you know, entry level. Then you move up to sport, club, and then lastly, pro. So based on your experience level, you'll get moved up through the ranks. So those, uh, you know, if you're at the head of the pack and you're one of probably the top five to eight drivers in a class at the end of a season, you can pretty much guarantee you're going to get bumped up to the next, to the next class. So where club racing, it's basically set on the car that you're driving. So the classes are set by the particular car you drive, not your experience. So somebody who's been club racing for 20 years, who's running, in my case, a spec boxster, will be there racing with rookies in the same spec boxster in the same class. And we, too, in club racing, run multi-class. Uh, there'll be spec boxsters. There'll be 944s, 924s, all running in the same group. And some of our sim racing classes, we will run multiple cars in the same class. Uh, as well. So um, again, a little bit different structure on who you're racing with. So it's nice, you know, if you're in that challenge group, it's a lot of newbies who are new to this and who are learning the ropes. But as you progress up, you know, you're talking within a second in qualifying that separates the first driver from possibly the 15th driver. So, you know, as you move up, you know, the, the competition gets tighter and tighter. Now, do you get the same butterflies as you do with Real racing? Because I, 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 I see like a water bottle and a sweat rag next to your, your <laughs> sim setup. Absolutely. Yeah, when you're, when you're sitting on grid after you qualify and, you know, the um, you know, race control comes on and tells you, you know, you know, we have 30 seconds to go. And, you know, the butterflies start to happen just, you know, just like in a regular race. It's, you know, it's just as intense and, you know, everybody's fighting for position and wants to perform well and, you know, is, is looking to – for that opportunity to pass somebody. And of course, you know, you don't want to mess up because, you know, you miss your apex or, you know, you run a little bit wide, you don't carry enough speed. And next thing you know, the guy who's been pushing you for the last six laps is now on his way by you. So um, yeah, it's, it's very intense and it's very similar experience 
uh, whether you're racing real cars or in sim, uh, you know, the best thing about sim is there is that reset button at the end of the day. You know, if you, if you don't do well, you can always just push that reset button and, and grab yourself a new car and get going. My first race, I remember I qualified, not last, Peter Smith, who was asking whether or not I was fast or slow. I wasn't last. I was probably second or third last. But nonetheless, like sitting at the back, seeing all, I think I had like 35 cars in that race all ahead of me. And I'm like, going into turn one at a DE or in a club race, like that's the, the one you're most worried about. And I'm like, I don't want to be that guy. Don't be that guy that caused the wreck. I'm like, I'm at the back. I can't cause that much commotion. And then just, you know, sliding it through it. Like it really is, I mean, you do sweat and you do get quite nervous and it's a lot of fun. And again, just talking about, you know, how it's very similar to um, what we do in real life, like afterwards talking to each other and congratulating those that survived that turn one and um, watching how some of these people, I don't know if they program the computer so that they drive that well, because it, <laughs> it almost seems unhuman that they can be that fast and that precise for that length of time but i guess it's like anything like in real club racing better, you right? see you know the, the 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 folks that are in the podium just kind of run circles around most people yeah and the friendships yeah, that we have developed a... the friendship that developed is just incre incredible because we all talk afterwards and most of these people i've never seen in, in person in real life before so it's it's very cool and talk let's talk about frequency of easy ease 101s uh, you know, Jim and I, we have projects with work. We have this bicycling, Porsche bicycling thing that we do. But many times when I'm trying to get a hold of him, he's like, I got I got a sim thing. I got a sim thing. It's like Sunday he does, Monday he does, Wednesday. I don't know how he gets anything done around the house because he's constantly sim racing. At least my kids are growing up out of the house. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it all depends on what you want out of it. Uh, some of these guys every day, every night they're doing it. Um, because iRacing is a, a subscription service, so our PCA sim racers will throw up uh, sessions all the time. Hey, I just threw up a, a practice session or we're going to do a race session, whoever wants to join. Um, so again, on Discord, there's a hosting a session channel. So you just look in there and it's like, oh, hey, somebody just put a session up. I'll go race with them. But you can do it as much as you want or as little as you want. It's Yeah, and I, I think what's great is, you know, we all... In real life, we're waiting for the weekends, right, yeah. to, to go do an autocross, a DE, or a club race. Here, you pretty much any night in the week, if things are slow for you. Uh, I know when I first started, Aaron and Jim threw up a, you know, let's do some laps here and here and here. And, you know, other people that happen to be on, they joined in. You can race at any time which is pretty awesome. And I know, I think Aaron, don't you even race like in the morning? Like you, you take this pretty seriously. Yeah, yeah. Um, what I found <laughs> yeah. is, I, I, don't get in trouble. <laughs> did I just, did I just out you? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, you know, luckily I'm an early bird. So, um, you know, usually uh, before work, I will throw uh, 45 minutes to an hour in. And then, um, you know, when I come home, either before dinner or after dinner, I'll hop on again. And sometimes just before, you know, bedtime at, you know, if I could just, you know, throw a few more laps in and, you know, you might be adjusting some of your settings within the car, the setup, but, you know, it's like anything else, you know, we joked earlier about spending money on new equipment to get faster, but, you know, the, the best way to get faster is to put in the seat time into practice, just like whether you're autocrossing, DE club racing, you need to practice, you know, nobody just jumps on this thing and, you know, automatically becomes fast. You have to put in the time and, you know, there's some of the pros, you know, I mean, I know they put in tens of hours a week practicing for a race, uh, you know, and it starts with getting a setup, working the setup, refining the setup, and then practice, 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 and then tweak the setup some more. So, you know, there are racers uh, within PCA Sim Racing that spend hours a week practicing for a race. Um, so, you know, those are the racers that are fast uh, because they put in the time and, and the dedication to it. And of course, you know, what's nice about it is you don't have to load the car. You don't have to drive to the track. You don't have to pay for gas and tires. You can, whenever you can find that half hour, you know, you can hop on and, and turn some laps. And not only individuals, there's team racing. And I have to thank Haggerty, the title sponsor for PCA Sim Racing. Haggerty has their team. Explain, we, we're kind of running to the end, but I want to make sure we cover this. Is we want to explain team racing. 
So team racing is exactly what it is. So it was what it sounds like is you have a team. So uh, PCA Sim Racing has been so popular, we, we decided what about a team uh, series? So we've got uh, races happening all year long in 2021 where it's a two driver team. Two so drivers we'll, in one car. In one car. Gotcha. So you'll have a four hour race or an hour and a half race and the first driver will drive the, the first half of the race or maybe the first stint until you run out of fuel. You'll come in the pits and you'll press a button and the other driver jumps in and then that driver will, will drive. And when you're not driving, you're spotting. So you can see the track, you can select your view, you can tell your, your teammate, you know, look out, there's a car off the track at turn one. So you can spot for them. And then when you switch back, then the other, the other driver spots again. And, and it is so much fun because you're actually talking to somebody and working through strategy and, and you may not have a great start, but by the end of the race, you never know what can happen with pit stops and fuel and just like a real tires, enduro. just like a real endurance race. Yeah. And so it's been a lot of fun. It's been a new addition to the racing. So yeah, we've got, we've got our series, our live broadcast races. We got zone, local zone group racing. We got this team racing. We got our EDE and our practice sessions. So like Vu was saying, it, it, there's pretty much something going on every night if you wanna if you wanna do some sim racing. So we've blown through an hour, but we wanna make sure <laughs> there's plenty of questions still probably. And, and if you're wondering where you can get information, yeah. PCASimRacing.com, we wanna mention that. And what can they find there? So uh, the website PCASimRacing.com has everything. So if you want to see the, the, the previous series, you want to see all the broadcasts, you can go find them there. You can find uh, everything that's coming up um, in the future. So our PCA Sim Racing uh, website is almost like a 30,000 uh, foot view of everything PCA Sim Racing. It shows you everything. Uh, the Discord server is where you really get the interaction with the other drivers and you can ask questions. So the, the two are very critical to uh, the program overall. But PCA Sim Racing is where you want to uh, get started. So at the very top, you'll actually see a Getting Started tab, and you can click on that. You can find out about sim racing. You find out about equipment. You can find out about EDE. And you can, of course, you can register for PCA Sim Racing. It is for PCA members. So if you have to be a PCA member, uh, you can be a, a co-member. You can be a, uh, a PCA junior can race with us, so there's no age limit with PCA Sim Racing. Uh, you can also be in the test drive program. So uh, if you're connected to PCA, you can, you can join PCA Sim Racing. But the website is an absolutely fantastic resource to get started. There's also a place in there you could just ask a question. That goes to our chair, Doug Atkinson, our Sim Racing chair. And uh, if he doesn't have the answer, which he usually does, he's got a, a team of over a dozen in our steering committee that can help answer the questions. And for those of you that are coming to Porsche Parade, uh, not this weekend, but the following week weekend, we'll be at Porsche Parade Tech Tactics Live. Uh, we also will have the sim racing contest at Parade. We'll have a dedicated room. You can come, come in, throw down some laps, and I believe the fastest lap is going to go home with a sim racing rig. Yeah, so. yeah we have, we'll have three sim racing rigs at parade. And if you've got the fastest lap in the competition, you get to take home a sim racing rig. And our next show is not going to be on a Wednesday. So I want to let you know our next show will be July 15th, which is a Thursday. And we're going to be live from Parade. We have some interesting cars. We have some folks that we're going to introduce you to. It should be a lot of fun. First time doing a live show with an audience at Porsche Parade. And I hope you'll join us then. Again, I want to thank Pirelli for sponsoring Tech Tactics Live. Thank Haggerty for being the title sponsor. Thank Aaron for joining us Thanks, from Aaron. Albany, New York. Thanks, and, Bo. Um, Thanks, Jim. You guys, thank you for dragging me into this world. I've had a lot of fun. I still have a lot more to do uh, as, as far as getting better. I just know I need to be faster than Peter Smith because I know he's watching. <laughs> and I'm throwing it down, Peter. Let's see if you can be as fast as me by the next, I'll watch that by the next year or so. But I hope you enjoyed this segment. We'll catch you uh, July 15th. We'll see you. Pass well executed.
Took about two or three times to get it running, but Mark Miller does get around Gabriel Albano, and that moves the New Holland Brewing PCA machine, the number four car, up to 13th overall, slides Team Two Bad Drivers back to 14th overall. As you can look at some of the great scenes of Sebring from our cameras, which have been provided to us this evening by Ducky Beard, riding on board with Gabriel Albano. Make the car a little better.